Welcome to the summer series of Make Movement Matter Minis with me, Wendy Welton. In a break between seasons of the usual interview style podcasts, I'm sharing a few short episodes to jolt your thinking and offer you a few practical suggestions to move more in your daily life. I really hope you enjoy them. And if you do, please share them with others. Follow for more. And I'd be incredibly grateful if you could rate and review the podcast to help me reach more people and spread the message about the importance of making movement matter in all our lives. So on with the episode. Welcome to the fourth of five Make Movement Matter mini podcasts over the summer, where I'm exploring a few simple and effective ways to maintain and improve your mobility, strength, and therefore overall movement well-being as we age. In our last episode, we talked about all things balance. Today, we're focusing on a crucial part of our body for overall movement health, our hips. When, whether you're feeling tight, experiencing pain, or just want to ensure your hips stay healthy, this episode is for you. We'll look at why hips are a subject that come up again and again. And as I always want to do, cover some practical tips for moving them in daily life to keep your hips mobile, strong and happy. First of all, I think it's important to say what I mean when I use the word hip, because it really is just short for hip joint. That is where your femur or your thigh bone meets part of your cocci or your pelvic bones. As I'm not a physiotherapist, for ease, I'm going to also include all the soft tissues that help make the hips move, like the ligaments, tendons and muscles. The hips are incredibly important for overall mobility. These ball and socket joints are designed to move in multiple planes of motion so we can move sideways, avoid falling, sit in cross-legged position or in a deep squat and many more. However, our modern lifestyles, especially if we spend a lot of time sitting, can mean we end up using them in a far more limited plane of motion. This can then lead to tightness in the front of our hips, our hip flexors, our glutes, or butt muscles can become weak and we notice reduced mobility in the ranges other than when our our legs are at hip width. This imbalance can cause discomfort, not only in the hips, but also in the lower back, even the knees, as when the joints above or below an area of pain aren't working well, this causes them to compensate for the lack of movement in those neighboring joints. So improving hip mobility and strength is essential for reducing pain and improving overall movement. Let's start with five tips for daily hip care. Incorporating these into your daily routine can help maintain and improve hip health. The first, as we discussed in the first Make Movement Matter Mini, is about moving often. Regular movement is essential for good blood flow and muscle engagement. So try to stand up and move every 30 minutes, as a rough rule, if you're working at a desk or if you need to sit for longer periods. And that's stopping in long car journeys too. Secondly, we all sit, but choosing to vary your sitting position regularly goes a long way to help improve that mobility and strength. If you're on a chair, shift to the front edge, sit in figure four, tuck your leg under you or kneel. This is where not caring how you look comes in. And the second part of the sitting tip is instead of always sitting in a chair, try sitting on the floor in different positions, which naturally increases your hip mobility and brings the added bonus of having to get up and down to the floor. This helps mobility and strength as we're resisting gravity with our whole body weight. Try to do so without using your hands. And if you'd like some ideas about floor sitting positions or a variety of ways to get up, then pop over to reclaimmovement.co.uk for the free resources tab where there's the ebook Making the Ground Your Friend for Life. Thirdly, try to get lots of walking in. And particularly importantly, vary your terrain so that you're always making your hips work differently. Walking on uneven and steep surfaces challenges and strengthens your hips. Also to help both open out the hip flexors at the front of the hips that can get really tight and make us less able to move well in our lower back, but also to fire and strengthen those glutes that are so important for a whole range of hip movement and their stability, we need to think about our walking technique. This would take a full mini episode in itself, but if you go to my YouTube channel at Reclaim at reclaim.movement and type in walking, there's a whole video on technique to help you get started. 
The fourth is to see obstacles differently. Either when you're out on your walk or even at home, choose to use obstacles or create opportunities like putting a bar across the kitchen doorway on two chairs for a day. Instead of always walking around something, stepping over and under is great for rotating the hips, which is the way that we use them less in our modern lives. Fifth, finally, the deep squat. Dare I say it. Don't forget, man's only been using chairs for about the last 5,000 of our 300,000 year existence. And for the previous 295, we sat on the ground, on rocks, fallen trees, and when nothing was available in the resting deep squat. The reason that this is talked about a lot in, is because with the advent of furniture, many of us have lost the ability through lack of use. After all, you see most kids doing it quite naturally until they adopt the sofa. It's not the be all and end all. And sitting in a deep knee bend where your heels don't meet the ground, as they do in a deep squat is still just great. The point is that bearing your own weight when your knees, hips and ankles are towards or at the end of their range of motion is a good thing. To be able to maintain that range of motion, which helps us practice a lot of practical things like cleaning the floor with a dustpan and brush, getting low to help a little person putting on their clothes, etc. If you follow me on social media, I'm sure you've probably seen me deep squatting at the washing machine or to change my cat's litter tray. So these are times in my life that I will always add in a squat. And because they happen regularly, I know I'm getting my squats in. Thinking of times you can add deep squats into your daily life helps to keep squatting, keep mobile and strong in the lower body and especially the hips. Again, for more help, with the deep squat, there's a popular video on my YouTube channel. So go and search it out. As well as the ways of adding in hip movements we've just covered, if you feel your body would benefit from a more targeted approach during mini movement breaks, then the following ground-based hip moves are great. One of the best sitting positions for opening up the hips is the side bent sit, also known as 90-90 or box sitting. Adding a transition movement from one side to the other feels great and is a wonderful way to improve hip rotation and release tension. Describing the movement in a podcast seems a bit weird, so instead I'm going to send you back to my YouTube channel and this time type in side bent sit reverses. You can add to these movements with hip lifts as you'll see at the end of the video. I always try to provide regressions making things easier and progressions to move on. The second movement is called hip shifting where we start in kneeling position bolstered by cushions and blankets if our knees and ankles require as doing so is not cheating it's enabling. Dropping the hips then from to the sides of your heels in various ways is a great way to increase the mobility of the hips by using a movement pattern we'd never use if we didn't get down to the floor to sit and move. Again, you've guessed it. It's on my YouTube channel. I feel like I'm just plugging my YouTube channel, but it is a good resource for some of the things I use most regularly. So type in hip shifting for this one. That could have been dangerous. <laughs> anyway, for number three, get down on your sitting room floor and challenge your kids, your partner, or even just yourself for fun to a hip walking race. Sit on the floor with your legs extended, use your hips to walk forward and backward. This really works your hip muscles and helps increase your mobility. And boy, is it hard work going backwards. Try not to move your upper body side to side too much but just have fun with it. That one's not on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Keeping your hips happy and well-functioning doesn't have to be complicated by incorporating these simple yet effective movements into your daily routine. You can improve your hip mobility and strength, reduce pain and enhance your overall movement quality. Remember, regularity and variety are key. Thank you for joining me and I hope you found these tips useful. Try them out. I always love to hear how you got on. If you want more detailed tutorials and videos and a lot more movements, then please do try the Reclaim Movement membership 
There's a seven day free trial. And after that, it's commitment free. And I'd love to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this mini episode and please press follow on Apple, Spotify or YouTube to make sure the next ones pop up as soon as they're released. If you'd like to hear more about how natural movement could benefit you, then head over to my website, reclaimmovement.co.uk and sign up to my newsletter or to have a more thorough introduction to all the ways a natural movement lifestyle can improve your mobility, strength and confidence. Then my five-day introductory course, Move More Naturally to Live Better, is for you. You can find all the details on the homepage. If you have any thoughts or questions, you can always get in touch with me at reclaim.movement on Instagram or email me at wendy at reclaimmovement.co.uk. See you next time and don't forget to just move.